I read hockey romances so you don't have to. Viewer discretion is advised for 18 plus content. The time has come. I've been putting it off, but we're, we're going to do it. I'm reading the cover and I'm a little scared because it says, if helping a sarcastic brunette make another guy jealous, it will lift his grades and secure his position on the team. He's all for it. But when one unexpected kiss leads to the wildest sex of both of their lives, it doesn't take long for Garrett to realize that pretend isn't going to cut it. Crying, pissing, shitting, <laughs> shaking. Please tell me that there's like not tying up in this and like a, well, a, a, I guess anal's not really that kinky. I don't know. I don't know. Kinky shit. I don't know. Let's, let's like make a prediction here. There's some like words and phrases in like smut that like I just can't, like they take me out of the story. Colleen Hoover does this a lot where she goes, he enters me. I'm like, I don't like that. And then they make all these smut about like literal penetration. And I get that that's part of sex. There's so many other things that sex involves and it never really gets covered in these. So maybe these guys will be nice and, you know, care about other aspects of sex. But let's do it. What? This book contains mentions of D-A and S-A. Smutty time over here. I don't like that. I don't like that. Okay, I'm hit by my first plot twist on page eight. He like bumps into Garrett, bumps into Hannah, and I was like, oh, it's totally gonna be someone else, and he's gonna be like fawning over someone else, and then it's gonna get into he sees her, and it's like a whole thing. But no, we're on page nine, so I'm going to bet here, and I'm hoping that within the first 25 pages, we don't get smut. I'll survive if we can last 25 pages. It's so sad that this is what that has come to. I'll update you. Okay, dramatic reading. Every time I turn around, he's in the midst of some form of debauchery on the kitchen counter, the living room couch, the dining room table. Dude's gotten it on every inch of the off-campus house the four of us share. He's a total slut and completely unapologetic about it. Granted, I'm not one to talk. I'm no monk and neither are Logan and Tuck. What can I say? Hockey players are horny motherfuckers. When we're not on the ice, we can usually be found hooking up with a puck bunny or two or three if your name is Tucker and it's New Year's Eve of last year. I remember when I hated my life and I said I didn't want to die, but I did. Now I know the reason why. Help me. We're on page 15 and it's not even with Hannah. <laughs> it's with Kendall. <laughs> I signed up for this. Acceptance, acceptance. Hey. Acceptance, acceptance. Another dramatic reading. Her lingerie and my clothes are strewn on the bedroom floor along with two empty condom packages. What? And the bottle of lube we hadn't needed to crack open. Two whole boxes? That's like a 30 count, right? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? Okay, page 33. He's given her the nickname Wellesley, and like she's confused, but like it's a hockey thing to like go by like an E sounding at the end of your last name. So like Brad Marchand goes by Marchi, Trace Bergeron goes by Bergy. It's like a whole thing. A, like anyone who has a name that you can do that with, you can do that, but like David Pasternak obviously goes by Pasta, or like Zidane Chara just goes by Z or Chara. Or like, Charlie Coyo goes by CC, but like a lot of times, like Ch Charlie McAvoy goes by Chucky. You know, like it's kind of like a thing. So I, I do like that. So this person actually knows hockey. Um, and I'm giving Bruins examples, that's my favorite team, but they've mentioned the Bruins in this book too. So like, you know, the author might have some taste. They see me rolling. All right, I'm gonna keep reading. So I'm up to chapter six right now and I've kind of noticed in all of these hockey books, it's kind of like 
enemies to lovers it happened like that in icebreaker that's the only other one i've read so i'm wondering if pucking around will be the same although i don't know how you go from enemies to double penetration but we'll find out but it has been 50 pages and the two main characters have not done it yet so i'm giving this one a chance i do like the pacing of the book but he's so blunt he's like me without a filter and that's scary but i'm gonna read as much as i feel like reading and then i'll update you at another time with some notes so i'm just not doing this the whole time i had to interject i'm sorry first i said the word panties and i just i don't like that but also <laughs> um they're at the point where they're like gonna do it for the first time and she's uncomfortable because of the previous events that she's encountered so now he's suggesting that she jerk it in front of <laughs> i said i didn't want to die but i did it's so weird but i do like the pacing so wish me luck okay i finished the deal last night all in one sitting so let's talk about it. First, I wanna talk about some of the things I didn't like. Um, the use of the word panties. I'm telling you, most girls do not refer to their underwear as panties. They say underwear thongs. I hate the word panties, I think it's so dumb. I also did not like. <laughs> um, this is like, I guess a personal thing, but I wonder if it's like, it's in a lot of the hockey books that I've noticed. It was in Icebreaker and it was in this one where he always comments on how tiny his girlfriend is. And I trust me, I understand. Like, I do find small women attractive. I get it. But he makes it a point, like, every time he talks about how big her boobs is, and he's like, and your tiny little waist. And it just kind of makes me feel icky because it's like, it brings, it reminds me that most guys only want smaller women, and for people like me, that's really sad. Sorry. <laughs> Moving aside from the things I did not, I didn't like. Let's talk about the things I did like. I really liked um, this L. Kennedy. It's her name. I really liked her writing style. Everything was fast paced. It, but it was a slow burn, but the writing was fast paced. It was easy to follow. I mean, I read it in one sitting, and I love books I can read in one sitting. Like I am honestly so excited to go get the rest of the series. Like I did really like it. I gave it five stars on Goodreads. <laughs> I like the amount of spice in this book. Um, there wasn't too much. It was just like the right amount. I am not a person who minds smut in books. Like I just, I don't care if people have sex and you know, I'm aware of it and it just doesn't phase me, I should say. But then you have books like the Anna Huang Twisted series where I'm just like every goddamn day, she's got her mouth on his dick and I'm just like, okay, that is not how <laughs> it works. I mean, I guess it could. Like some BDSM relationships would do that, but it's just like, it's not my style, let's just say. So yeah, I, I like that. Uh, it kind of teased it at the beginning, but then it like was super like, they only text like three or four times in the whole book. So it's great. Um, I personally really like how slow he went for her, even when she was sober and was like, yes, I really want to have sex with you, that he was very understanding and sensitive to her past and what happened and was like we're just gonna go slow and every time do a little bit more because you know once you do it it's like if, he, if she's uncomfortable he's never gonna get to see her again and so he's like it's halfway selfish but also he really does care about her and wants her to be comfortable so i really like that garrett was perfect again an icebreaker that's how i want a man to treat me like that i i would love the banter i love how <laughs> vulgar his vocabulary is because i'm gonna be really honest in my personal life i definitely talk like garrett so in a relationship i wouldn't want someone whose vernacular is not the same as mine because it would probably um not vote well for me but he was so kind and so sensitive and i mean he was very honest and i did like that they were both very honest characters um i i've noticed that a lot of the girls in the hockey books are very brash and I don't necessarily know if I love it, but I don't hate it. I would rather them be brash than be like, hmm. Like I would hate that. I 
took a peek at the page after the last page where it was giving a sneak peek into the other ones and I am convinced it's gonna be like the Anna Huang series twisted where it's gonna be about all the roommates so like what Tucker and Dean and Logan they're all gonna get their girls it, it's, it's gonna be a whole thing because well I guess yeah because in Wildfire, which is the next book in the Maple Hill series, it's about one of the roommates. So yeah, it, it's it's gonna be a roommate situation, but I'm really, really, really scared for pucking around. It's like 800 pages of double penetration is what I've heard from Jack Edwards, not personally, but from his videos. So it makes me a little scared. Um, oh, another prediction I have, Kendall, the girl at the beginning who like was all up Garrett she might date one of the roommates like I feel like she's gonna come back because that wouldn't that be so funny like she was all up on Garrett and then like she's like married to Dean or something like I, I think that'd be hilarious but I'm just I'm so scared for pucking around but let's go all right we're finally doing it, pucking around. 743 pages of smut. Okay, I literally was gonna start this on the toilet and then update, but I have to talk about this. Tropes and tags and content warnings. Hockey romance. Why choose friends, lovers, insta love. I don't know what why choose means. I guess we'll figure that out, but the tags. MF, MM, MMF, MFM, -M 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 -M. There's a force and there's an orgy in this. Hockey romance, romantic comedy, and love friends, lovers, queer awakening, too much sex, I'll puck the bear, golden retriever, everyone has tattoos, baby girl, <laughs> bend over, ah, is daddy kinking this, oh no, 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 no. Daddy's favorite. Crying, pissing, shitting, <laughs> shaking, that's me right now. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. No, oh, there's, there's orgies. <laughs> Impact play, <laughs> choking, voyeurism. I can do voyeur bonded. DP, DP in the vagina. Oh no, it's double penetration in one hole. Hey. Acceptance, acceptance. Da dom, spit play. What's snowballing? I love you, Jesus. Is that like spit roasting <laughs> and breeding kink? Rachel's a Cancer, Ilmari is an Aries, Jake's Taurus, and Caitlin's a Sagittarius. So I guess these are the four characters that are gonna do all the sexing. Oh, I would love to have the sex with you. I looked up what snowballing is and it's not like spit roasting. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Caleb's the equipment manager. <laughs> Whenever a Bruin breaks a snake, I'm never gonna be able to think about an equipment manager the same. <laughs> the girl is one of the team doctors! Crying. <sighs> acceptance, acceptance. Hey. Acceptance, acceptance. I've made a grave mistake. <laughs> you know how, like, you'll flip to a random page to see what's going on? I read a snowball thing. It was one sentence, but I knew. <laughs> no. So we're up to chapter 44 and the daddy kink came out of nowhere, like jump scare. But I will say, I do think it is pretty, from what I would expect, obviously I have no experience being in a poly relationship, but I feel like it's very, like what you would expect in a poly relationship where when you first start out you're trying to test the waters to see what you're doing with a certain person on a certain day and like testing boundaries and things like that and arguing over people i feel like that's very common so i do like that aspect i do like it so far a lot lost my train of thought it's one in the morning so i'll update you in the morning okay so we're ready for the pucking around review and I've had some time to sit with this. I definitely had a little bit different opinions when I finished the book versus it's been like almost 12 hours since I finished the book now. And I've had like a whole day ahead of me to think about it because we were really slow at work. I guess I was thinking about it so much that Peyton literally was like, are you okay? <laughs> so Peyton, this is what we were discussing that I didn't like give you the details on, but this is 
where my head's been at. I gave it four stars. I, I did enjoy lots of the book, but, and I'm not talking about the, the, the smut part. I'm just like leaving that aside. There are parts I really do like about the book and there's parts I really didn't like about the book. I did not care for Omari at all. Him coming in and like being a part of the group felt very forced and sudden. <laughs> like she has this great thing going with Jake and Caleb and you know all of a sudden he kisses her and the next day she's like he has to join the group. <laughs> Is this a five o'clock free crack giveaway? <laughs> And every time it kept switching to his perspective before he was introduced to the group, I was like, why? Well, I don't care about his point of view, especially if, maybe if they didn't include his point of view until he was a part of the group, I would have felt a little bit differently, but I think it was just too much. What I'm trying to say is there was so much going on already that they should have taken a second book to introduce Omari into the relationship because then it wouldn't have felt forced. And I was writing my review on Goodreads and I came across a review that I didn't even think about this until I read this review talking about how <laughs> unprofessional and horny Rachel was. There was, a, there was a prequel that I did not read, but apparently she had actual character development in that one and had a personality, but in this one, her literal entire personality was, I'm the team doctor and I'll also get on my knees for you if you're hot. <laughs> Like literally every attractive man, she's like, oh, gotta suck a dick, gotta suck a dick. Like literally that's, li that's, that's her whole personality. And I totally see that. And a problem I find in a lot of romance novels is I like to call it the, like, the Tori Vega victorious trope where the main character is so boring that you're wondering why there's a story about them. And all of the friends are way more interesting and way more talented. And you're just like, and this is supposed to be your story? Getting to the parts I really enjoyed, I really, 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 really enjoyed Caleb and Jake's relationship and maybe it's just I have like a soft spot for like queer romance being queer myself. You keep your gay to a minimum. I thought their relationship was very sweet, very wholesome. I'm not talking about the sex stuff because obviously that was very kinky, but they love each other so much and it's very obvious from even before they started hooking up that they like each other they like love each other and i would have really 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 loved to have more caleb and jake not like necessarily like sex but like them just talking about their relationship even before it was established because i get that they were supposed to be the slow burn of the story but i still wish we had more time with them for them to establish stuff like maybe just them flirting a little bit but like not really saying anything like you know Again, this is a trope in a lot of romance books, especially the ones about hockey players. The sequel is about the best friend and another hockey player. Like, I really don't care about Tess and Langley. I really don't. I'm not gonna be reading it. There is another book um, about these three, four, I guess it's four people um, that I would be interested to read, but I'm not interested in reading the rest of the series because I just don't care about all of these fucking side characters. Clap if you care. All right, let's move on. Perfect. Getting a love interest. But those are my thoughts. This one was very good. I literally read it. I spent six hours last night reading it and didn't finish it until this morning. So it's like a total seven hour read because it was almost 800 pages, but I liked it. There are parts I didn't like. Those are my thoughts. I definitely, it's, it's hard. The relationship, my favorite relationship of all of them was Caleb and Jake's. But I like the deal series a little bit better just because it's a little easier to digest. Like the smut was just the perfect amount. But <laughs> I do like how this book is trying to normalize um, polyamory because it should not be something that people are uncomfortable with. Because again, it's like with being gay, it does not affect you. If, if you're not a part of that situation, it doesn't affect you. So you shouldn't care or judge about it. But I'm going to go read another book but not another hockey romance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give myself like a week off before I get the rest of the um, series from the deal. But hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, this is probably my last video that I'm gonna film of 2023, but you guys probably won't see this until January. So happy new year.